some people think that the only bad thing about the Catholic worker is the name because people who've grown up in the Roman Catholic Church and people who haven't sometimes tend to equate Catholic worker completely with the Catholic Church. They think it's part of the Catholic Church. They think it's part of the diocese. And of course, many people in worker houses are Catholic. I was what you call a cradle Catholic. A surprising number are converts. But there are a lot of people who aren't Catholic. There are some who wouldn't even call themselves Christian. Dorothy Day was a, a good teacher. She laid out a plan that other people could pick up and follow in their own way. And so the, the philosophy and the uh, function of the worker movement is, is accessible and easy to understand for a lot of people who are attracted to it. We read in that, in her long loneliness, where she was out walking her brother, in, and he was um, in the carriage or in, in the stroller, and she looked around and she saw people living in, um, in conditions that she knew were not right. And so she, in a sense, I think what Dorothy did was she was a part of building this bridge between like the way it's supposed to be and the way it is. And she wanted to kind of create the world to become more of what God intended when God created the world. And so, you know, that's what she spent her life doing. Of course I knew intellectually and I, and I, and I understand now that, that Dorothy never intended that everybody should remain at the Catholic Worker, that was necessarily uh, the uh, vocation uh, for, for everyone or ought, or ought to be. Uh, she, she often said that the Catholic Worker was a kind of school and uh, people you know, came for, for sometimes only a few days, uh, sometimes for a few hours. Uh, the important thing was what they learned there and what they did with it. The Catholic Worker is an incubator. It gives people an idea, it gives people some sort of a sense of their own rich identity and yet people come and, and they go. And sometimes it seems heartbreaking to see people come and go, but actually it is a tremendous experience in birth and resurrection because people come to the Catholic worker and they discover that what, what they're interested in is one phase of life and they proceed, whether it be some kind of housing, whether it be battered women, whether it be child abuse, whether it be something academic, and so there is a, a constant flow and a constant ebb, and this to me is part of, of, of the river of life. It was not just uh, you know, protest and, and taking to the streets and picketing and, and uh, 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 you know, demonstrations and marching in the streets, but that you know, that's not what she meant by love and action. What she meant was uh, that, it had to, you know, all that had to be related always in a very concrete way to, to, to the needs of, of you know, the person in front of you and living in such a way that you were uh, even aware of the needs of someone in front of you because she, uh, you know, most of us are able to insulate ourselves uh, pretty well from images of, of need or the sights or smells of need. I don't have any, um, I don't, I mean, ideas that I'm going to change the world or anything like that, but you know, if I can just do my little thing out there I, um, to maybe help to bring about more justice. Um, you know, it'll be worth it. You can't stop all wars, and you can't feed all everybody who is hungry. You have to know your personal and emotional limits. And I told how I came to that insight after my first uh, very embarrassing failure in trying to start out a house of hospitality and trying to save someone else. And then coming to realize that you can't save other people, that they have to live their own lives. She also had a way of always poking fun at the follies of the Catholic worker and the failures of the Catholic worker, which was a great gift because she, um, there could be, I think, like a temptation to, uh, to say, oh, we're doing the work, we're doing the right work, you know, and you people, wherever you are, are not really doing the heroic thing that we're doing, you know. But it wasn't that. She always, uh, it was more uh, the effort that goes into something. Well, what, what's the spirit that you do it with? And, and the main thing was that you do everything with a spirit of love and, and, uh, and devotion. When I think back on my, my time uh, at the Catholic Worker, I, what, I, what I most miss in a way is that kind of, of uh, a freedom to be to be open to whatever the challenge or the needs 
of the moment might be, uh, because I didn't have to get anywhere. I didn't have any particular deadline or appointment I had to meet. Uh, it was a kind of feeling that, that uh, whatever moment you were in, uh, where was uh, God speaking to you in that moment? Um, if, uh, if somebody who uh, might be boring you, sitting next to you with their relentless story of their, of their life and their troubles, maybe just listening to that person at that moment, paying attention to them, uh, that was, uh, that's, that's, that's where God was for you in that moment. Although I'm no longer a Catholic myself, I still feel deeply my identity with the Catholic worker community because it is in the Catholic worker community that one finds this wonderful generosity of, and this acceptance of other, of other people as they are.